Okay, guys. So um, this is actually important. If you, if you'll pay attention to me just for the moment, the reason why I wanted you to do this question is because of this situation. All right. Now, this situation leads on from something that you might have done with um, factorising quadratics. Do you remember factorising quadratics? Yeah. So if I just um, skip over here a minute, out of the way. Um, not, not allowing me to do it. So if you had to... Oh, come on. Oh. All right, so factorising quad... When you had to factorise x squared plus 5x plus 6... So if I said to you, factorise that, do you, do you remember doing that? Yeah. You've done that with Mr. Juggler, yeah? You, who could tell me the answer for that? This one. Uh, uh, back three, just to put it after x. Uh, 6 and uh, plus uh, x plus... Is this a tough one? What are the, what are the rules... Oh, no. That is love. This kind yeah, of numbers, is. so what you, when you multiply, you get the 6, and when yeah. you multiply, you get the 5. Over. So it's A times B makes 6, and A plus B makes 5, and then we have A and B in the brackets. Yeah. So two numbers multiply to make 6, also add to make 5. They are... 3 and 2. 3 and 2. Yeah? So, 3 and 2. So, if I multiply that out, I get <coughs> this. Yeah? Do you remember that? Remember doing it? So, to check, you multiply it out. x times x is x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6. The 3 and the 2 add together. That's why you get it to make 5x. So we end up with x squared plus 5x plus 6. So do you remember doing that? Mm. Right, so then there was another one though, where if I said to you, factorise x squared minus 9. Now this one is called, if anyone remembers, the difference of two squares. Okay, does that ring a bell with anyone? Sort of. So if I asked you to factorise x squared minus 9, what would you do? What would you tell me? Anyone remember? So actually, is, this is one you kind of have to remember. If you don't remember it, you're not going to get there. You're not going to do it. Because lots of people would go, doesn't factorise. Unless you remember the difference of two squares. Think of, think about the numbers of the square is equal to Okay. And uh, actually the answer is x plus 3 and x minus 9. Yeah. Because it's 3 times 3 makes 9, that's the square. And the x squared is the other square. And the difference of means subtract. Okay. Uh, if you notice that situation, so actually x squared minus 9 is the same thing as x squared minus 3 squared, the difference of 2 squares. And when you have this situation, you can do x plus 3, x minus 3. And if I multiply that out, I get x squared minus 9. So another example would be x squared minus, give me a number, 4. x squared minus 4, if I factorise, would be x plus 2, two. x plus minus 2. Minus two. Yeah. If I had x squared minus, give me another number. Yeah, ten. 7, 10? They're not going to work. 20 is <laughs> not going to work. Uh, 21. Difference of squares, what are the squares? Oh, 64. 1, 4, 9, 16, oh, 25. 36, 49, 64, 
anything multiplied by itself. So 64. So it would be x plus 8. eight. And x, x minus, minus 8. Okay. Just to check your paying attention, what about x squared plus 25? What do you think? X plus 5, yeah. X minus 5. Yeah. Think? Everyone agree? No. Yes. Uh, no. Are you serious? Why don't no, you agree? No, 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 no. no, yeah. No. So is they're both same to the middle part. Oh, the difference oh. of <coughs> negative, negative. The difference of is always the difference of subtract. <laughs> this one is positive. positive and it doesn't work. So that's not true. Okay? You not just allowed need it. to put the minus in the five. Instead no, of the minus, you put no it doesn't work. It just no. doesn't work. Because, for instance, um, I can't factorise x squared plus 25. Because if I did x plus 5 times x plus 5, it would be x squared plus 5 add 5 makes 10x. 5 times 5 makes... 25, so I've got this bit in the middle, it's too much. Alright? And if I did x minus 5 and x minus 5, it would be x squared minus 10x plus 25, which again is not what I started with. Okay, so that's why it's important the difference of 2 squared. Remember that? Sort of. Yeah. So you need to be aware of. Now, I just want to bring to your attention, look, that we've got x plus 3, x minus 3, plus 2, minus 2, plus 8, minus 8. And the reason why these end up like this is because when we multiply them out, look, we get, what's that? x squared plus 2x. minus 2x, and then minus 4. So that's where the minus... Now, why do the plus 2x and minus 2x suddenly just disappear? Because they cancel each other out. The plus 2x and minus 2x equals 0. So it disappears. Understand? Now, that then is why, when we're doing this stuff... Where are we? Um, this one here, what do you notice about the thirds and what's in the bracket? It's root 7 plus 4, root 7 minus 4. So things are going to simplify. So we do the same thing. Root 7, seven. so 7. We do root. plus 4, 4. root 7. Minus mm. 4 root 7, and then minus 16. Yeah? What happens to the plus 4 root 7 and the minus 4 root 7? Zero. Comes 0. So we end up with just 7, seven minus, 16. minus 16, which happens to be minus, minus 9. Yeah? Yeah. Right, so here's the shortcut that maybe you would spot, which is, if I take another one, like, um, take another easy one, 4 minus root 6, okay? So 4 minus root 6 times 4 plus root 6. Now, for those of you that are really switched on now, Okay, you will have spotted a quick way of doing this. Okay. <coughs> so, a quick way of than doing all of this, because what we end up with, if you look over here, look, if we do plus 3 minus 3, x plus 3 minus, it becomes x squared, so x squared, minus 3 squared. It doesn't have a root. No, it's the same principle though. We get, look, x squared minus 3 squared.
because we've got x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay? Now, hopefully, what we'll notice is we've basically got this situation where 4 minus root 6 and 4 plus root 6 will become 4 squared minus root 6 squared. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But it cancels it out, so then what? So it becomes 16, 16 mi minus 6. Minus 6, which is 10. 4 squared comes from here. What? There's two 4s. Can't you just times them? Well, I have. But what I'm trying to do is give you the shortcut. Okay? But it only works, so let me remind you, when you have, I'm going to do it in the general sense now, when you have algebra, when you have x a plus b times a minus b, what does it become? a squared minus b squared. Okay, so we can use that situation. Alright, so... One final one then. So if I have um, 3 plus 3 root 2, this one I'm just making up, and 3 minus 3 root 2, what's the quick way of doing it? So I could obviously do the long way of eyebrows and stuff like that. That's absolutely fine if you're happy sticking to that. But for those of us that want to really get efficient and quick with our maths, what could I do with this? So this is basically a plus b. So you start with 3 squared. Good. Oh, so, so I start it's 3 squared. 3 squared. Minus 3, minus root, two, three root 2 squared. 3 root 2 squared. Yeah. Okay. Everyone happy with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. 3 squared is? 9. 9 minus. Now here's the question. What's 3 root 2 squared? So it's... 3 squared, which is 9. Yeah. Root 2 squared is oh, 2. It's 18. So it's 9 times 2 makes 18. 18. So 9 minus 18 is minus 9. That's so easy. It's much easier, isn't it? Oh my God. But you can only get to the easy once you understand fully all these other bits and pieces. Because if you just try and remember it for this situation, you'll never get there. All right? You'll never remember it as a one-off thing. You have to kind of make the link. All right? Should I give you one more to do for yourself? I didn't realise that was the quick way. I thought that was the way you were supposed to do it. Because that's how I did it. Oh, that's how you did it. Well, that's fine then. That's good. All right? Um, so if I said 2 root 3 minus 1, and 1 plus 2 root 3, I ask you to... Oh, that's harder. Oh, is it? Is it harder? Oh, no, you do what... Do you understand that subtraction has to be done that way around? Yeah? I can't change that. But does addition have to be done this way around? Is 2 plus 3 the same as 3 plus 2? Yeah. So, why don't I just have 2 root 3 <coughs> minus 1, and then 2 root 3 plus 1? Happy with that? Now, we've still got A plus B and A minus B. It doesn't matter which way around. And then, right. one. and then it becomes what, finally? Why 12? Uh, 2 root 3 <laughs> squared four yeah. minus yeah. One. 1 squared. Yeah. 2 root 3 is... Uh, Squared is 12. 12. So it's 4 times 3 makes 12. Minus 1 squared is 1. 12 minus 1 is 11. 
11. So that's your answer. Where did you get the 12 from? You got it. You didn't I did that for 12. Let's have a look now. Drab. Two root three, three, three squared means two root three times two root three, which is two times root three times two times root three. Yeah. Which is two root three. Which is two times two makes four times root three times root three. Three. Oh, twelve. Twelve. So that's where the twelve comes from. Yeah. Right, now here's the thing. This is why this is very, very useful for the next thing we'll go well, next but one. What do you notice about the answers to all of these, considering we started with thirds? They're integers. No third. No third. There's never going to be a decimal or a recurring number. Well, yeah, exactly. You notice how none of them, they all started with thirds. But they ended. They end up with? with integers. No thirds. Yeah. Integers. All right? Now, that's why we do it. That's why we do it. We use this piece of information. All right? So the next thing I'm going to talk about is how we're going to use that piece of information to our advantage when we have to simplify something else. Is that clear? Yeah? All right. So, our objective that you're going to write down next. Right? I'm going to write it down. Okay. So, our objective. Right? Be able to rationalise the denominator of a third fraction. Okay. Now, this is the word. That's the focus point. Rationalise the denominator of a third fraction. So, you do know what this means. You do. Even if you say you don't. You just haven't tweaked it yet. So what do you think rationalising means? The only one you can think of. So you can think of it. Rational. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't put that in this context. I wouldn't think of rationalising a denominator as one I can think of. Because do you know what? If I were to ask a, a three-year-old what they can think of, they can think of everything. But they like, can think of it. No, what's unicorn. normal? What's normal? What is normal? Are you normal? Of course. Not. See, from my point of view, no, you're not, but from your point of view, you may be normal. So that normal, no, we know what the word rational and irrational means in terms of numbers, don't we? Yes. And what's an irrational number again? We've been working with them all the time. They are? Numbers that can't be expressed as a fraction. And which numbers have we been using that can't be expressed as a fraction? Thirds. Thirds. So, a third is an irrational number. The numbers that can be expressed as a fraction, therefore, are rational. Alright? So, when I say rationalise the denominator, what I mean by that is you have a denominator that is a third, an irrational number, but I want you to convert it into a number that has a rational denominator. And by rational I mean a number that is like an integer. Right? Not one that I can think of because I can think of anything. Right? Alright, so for instance, if I have um, a fraction like 2 over root 3. So there's a fraction. Alright? 2 over root 3. That denominator is irrational. Okay? So it has an irrational denominator. Do you know what I mean by denominator? Well, mm -hmm. That's the denominator. Okay. Right. Just to highlight, just in case you forget, denominator is the bottom. So what we have to do 
is rationalize this. So we need to get from root 3 to something that's not root, root 3. Now, do you, but that's without changing the value of the fraction. Now, you all know how to change a fraction but keep it the same value, don't you? If I said to you two thirds as a fraction, well, give me another fraction that's got what the same value as two thirds. 20 out of 30. 20 out of 30. So 2 over 3 is the same as 20 out of 30. Is also the same as? It will be the same as uh, 2 over 3. That's what he said. 2 over 3 is the same thing as uh, 10 out of 15. 10 out of 15. Okay. What did I do to go from 2, out of three, two over 3 to two, 20 over 30? So I have to multiply the top and the bottom by an amount. As long as I do the same thing to top and bottom, the fraction does not change value. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So this is what I have to do with this one. And it's, what's the best thing to multiply, or probably the only thing to multiply the top and bottom by? I've got to multiply the top and bottom by the same amount to keep it the same. What's the best and only thing I can multiply this by to get rid of root 3, an irrational denominator? So if I multiply by square root of 3, what do I multiply the top by? Same. Okay. What does it become? So what does the denominator become? Three. three. Root three times root three is three. What does the top become? The numerator? Two root three. Two root three. Now, what do you notice about the denominator? <coughs> it's rational. It's rational. That's it. Easy, no? No. No? Why? What's, what's difficult about that draft? You don't know. You just want to make it hard. Okay? Any questions? Calista? Wouldn't you also have to change the top number to make it a whole number? To make it a whole number, what do you mean? Like a way of keeping the denominator as 3, but can we also change the top number so it doesn't have the root? Or can we ah, no, but this is the thing. Um, that's not what I'm trying to do. The reason is uh, a fraction is a division isn't it? It's 2 divided by root 3. Now when you divide by a number, the number that you divide by is quite important and you want it to be as easy as possible. So actually I don't want to make this any simpler. This is not simpler in any way. It's just different and it's different in that my denominator is no longer a third. What the top is it doesn't matter to me. All I want is to get rid of the third on the bottom. Does that make sense? So the top can be as complicated as I need it to be. Right? But the denominator needs to be a rational number. Make sense? Yeah? So if I were to give you um, 5 over root 5 to do. What if I were to give you... Um, 3 over root 7. Go for it. Two examples to go through. I think, on the whole, not too bad. Um, what you did for part A, you multiplied by root 5. Easy. Multiply the top by root 5. You ended up with 5, five root five, 5 over five. 5. Great. First step up. But... Did you simplify and leave? No, Ken. Okay. Five over five actually make, becomes one, like so, we talked about. So, so the answer just is root just five. root five. Root, root five. five. Okay? Just root five. So five divided by root five is root five. All right? Um, three over seven. So we multiply by root seven times root 7, becomes over 
7 and 3 root 7. There's no simplification to be done. We check these numbers. Can I simplify at all? All right. Understand? All right. What I'm going to ask you to do then is exercise 6H. Exercise 6H um, on page 143. Is this a new topic? No, no. I'm going to ask you to do question 1. But I'm going to ask you to do um, I, J, um, L, M, N, um, Q, R, S, T. Q, R, S, T. So those are the questions I want you to do to start with. All right, make sense? So looking at these questions, I think um, they're okay, yeah? Not too bad. Now, I'm just going to go through a couple. I think on the whole we're okay with these, but let's, um, let's have a look at the one that is... Um, which one did I pick out? I wanted to go through. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go for 1 over 2 root 3. Now, I just want to go through that one for a reason. Because when I want to rationalise this denominator, guys, actually, it's not always necessary to multiply by the whole of the denominator. All right? What I'm trying to get rid of is the root 3. So therefore, the only thing I actually need to multiply by is the root 3. I don't need to multiply by 2 root 3. If I do, so let's say I do 1 over 2 root 3 times 2 root 3, times 2 root 3, I end up with the same answer, but I have to simplify it a bit. So let's go through both of them. So this becomes root 3 over... 2 times 3, which is 6. So I get root 3 over 6 there. If I do this one, I end up with 2 root 3 over 4 times 3 makes 12. Now, is this and this the same answer? Yeah. Yeah, see, I, I need everyone paying attention, don't I? Because otherwise, the point I'm trying to teach you it's lost. Is this and this the same? Yes. So if I divide through by the 2 and take the 2 out, I get left with the 6. So I get left with root 3 over 6, which is what I have there anyway. So actually, it doesn't matter if you do, but you don't have to. Alright? Now, the next gone. Pardon? T. You want to go through T together. Alright? So, um, let's go through t, so it's 1 over root 2 cubed. Now, here's the thing, with this one, well actually, Rado, do you want to tell me what you did with this? And you want to divide it by the root, yes. Yeah. Which is 2 squared over 2. Okay, so before we do anything, we actually want to convert root 2 cubed. So root 2 cubed is root 2 times root 2 times root 2. We've done this before, which ends up as 2 root 2. So this bit becomes 2, yeah? 2 root 2. Happy with that? So on the bottom of the fraction already, it becomes 2 root 2. Before I've done anything. So now what do I do? Multiply by... Root 2. Multiply by root 2. So it becomes root 2 over 2 times 2, which makes 4. Okay? So that's how you do that. Just another step before. Alright. Why 2 root 2? Which one? This one? Yeah, the, the T. Why is why has it become 2 root 2? Yeah. Over here, look. 
So two root, root 2 cubed is root 2 times root 2 times root 2. And that changes to 2 root 2. Because root 2 times root 2 is the 2 here. So instead of two root 2 cubed, I'm going to write 2 root 2. It's the same thing. Right? Now, um, you can go back and practice a few more of those. But for those of you that feel, no, I'm fine, let's progress. Right? I want to go through the next ones. All right? And I want to go through how we simplify when the denominator starts getting a little bit more complex. So we've got 1 over 3 subtract root 5 this time. And I'm going to put it in brackets just to give you a clue. All right? So with these ones, what I did was I multiplied by the same that was on the bottom. All right. What do we do here? Do you think we do the same thing? Okay. What do you think, Rado? Both sides by the ones in the brackets. So if we multiply both by 3 minus root 5, right, what are we trying to do again by multiplying the denominator? We're trying to... Remind me. So, uh, so we... Rationalise. Rationalise. And to rationalise, that means we don't have any... Third thing. The third. Third. So, so what I want you to try for this one, so this is what you're telling me you should do, because it makes sense, because that's what we've been doing before. So obviously, the top of the fraction becomes 1 times... Well, that's easy. That's just 3 minus root 5. And that's, that's not a problem. Tell me what the denominator becomes. So I want you... So you've now got to do, multiply those two brackets out, like we were doing before. So, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 3 root 5, minus 3 root 5, and then plus root 5 times root 5 is 5. Now let's just collect our like terms. So what does it become? It becomes 3 minus root 5 over 9 plus 5 is 14. 14. And minus 3 root 5 minus another 3 root 5 becomes <coughs> minus, <coughs> minus 6 root 5. Okay. What hasn't happened? No, rational. We haven't rationalised anything. So by doing that multiplication, the, multiplying by the same thing didn't work. It didn't rationalise the denominator. Well, that sucks, doesn't it, Drow? It does. It does. <coughs> it didn't do the job. We need a different thing to do. Now, I'm going to take you back to what we were doing at the beginning of the lesson. Um, oh, yippee, yeah, back in time, Drow. Thanks for your enthusiasm. Wait. What did we notice? It will still be there, Shemaya. What did we notice about these ones? Ah, easy. Oh, that it ends in an integer. Oh, the, the so you're going to have the negative. Yeah. Now you're getting it. So in, in this situation, instead of doing multiplying by the same thing, what do you think we should multiply by? Instead, the positive. So this multiply by three, three plus, plus root, root five. five, and we do the same on the top. Three plus, plus root five. Seven. Okay, I'm only killing you because you want it to kill you. All right, now we've done this, so actually this should be really quick and easy now. So one times root three, so that would become three, three, three plus, plus root, root five. five. Now, do you remember what this happened? What six, happened here? Six squared. Not six squared, but three squared. Oh yeah. Minus. No, I, sorry. Three. Minus five squared. Root five. That's what I meant. Squared. So it becomes three plus root five over nine minus five, five which is three plus root five four. over four. 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 So now we have our rationalised denominator. 
So this is the difficult bit. All, yeah, all the cool. other skills that we've been building up to is to deal with ones like this. So all that work we've been done on simplifying ratio, um, simplifying thirds and dividing by thirds and what happens when you multiply together and expanding the brackets all leads us to, to being able to do this. All right. So um, I am going to leave you to get on with some more, but just in case you didn't quite get it, um, so this is question two, A. Let's do question two, B together. So we've got one over two plus root three. Well, if it's one over two plus root three, what do I multiply by, Callista? Um, multiply it by two plus root three. Sorry, no. Oh, three. Two minus root three, yeah. There you go. So that's what we multiply by. All right. Uh, just looking through the book then. You got your book in front of you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, question C, we've got um, 1 over 4 minus root 11. What do you multiply by? Igor. 4 minus root 11, you multiply by 4 plus root 11. Yeah. D, we've got root 2 over 5 plus root 2. Shalaya, what do we multiply by? Uh, we multiply by... D, what do we multiply by? Anyone have them out? Minus. Minus. No, say it in full. If he uh, doesn't know. Five mind. minus root two. Five minus root two. Oh, minus. E, we've got root three over three plus root three. What do we multiply by, Radislav? Three minus. three minus root three. Drow, we've got oh, five two over two minus three root two. What do we multiply by? Right. F. <laughs> Read Draw it. the book. The book. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got 5 right. over 2 minus 3 root 2. Five what do we multiply by? Multiply by 5? Nope. Multiply. What? Uh, Get with us. Mentally, you need to be positive. Two. No. Add. Listen to what Oscar's going to say. 2 plus 3 root 2. 2 plus 3 root 2. Why? So you just take yeah. the bottom and it's. Whether it's if it's a negative there, you just put a positive. positive. So, drought. I've got negative root five over three plus two root five. What do you multiply it by? Top and bottom by. What's that? Well, actually, you put a negative. Negative. Oh, a negative. So you put multiply by. Say it in full. Negative. <laughs> We're out. You have to say the whole thing. Ah. So ah. Okay. Three minus two root of five. Yes. Exactly. And uh, Yifan, what do we multiply h by? Uh, two minus root seven. Two minus root seven. Yes. I have a question. How much is the denominator of both kinds? The positive and negative. Do you need to put? Uh. In which example? No, it's not an example. Well, it's not going to have two sides. No. We never write that. We never write something plus minus something. Don't do that, because plus minus is the same as a minus. So no, I mean, for like, example, 2 minus 3 root 2 plus 2. Uh, oh, you'd have to simplify stuff. If, but yeah, it's just the sign. Or no? it's, a very, it's a bit different. It's a bit of a different example. We'll, we'll talk about that um, if you want to in a minute. Okay, now, can I get you guys then to do question two, C through H? So, C through to H of question two.